Morgan. I'm the Senior Vice President of International Business for Triplight. Uh, my role today is really to expand the uh, geographical presence for Triplight outside of just the US, where we're extremely well known and we have a very strong brand presence in the US. Um, but we have in the last five to ten years been very much focused on the international expansion. So uh, uh, my staff now represents about a, a quarter of the uh, company's uh, staff, so you can see where we're expanding. What attracted me to the data center industry? Um, really just the accumulation of all the disciplines. Uh, you know, 35 years ago when I entered the industry, the appealing factor for me was that it combined networking, it combined software, it combined hardware. Basically all the aspects of the uh, disciplines that I studied back when I was at university. So it, it was just an attractive industry from that perspective really. Mission critical power has become uh, somewhat of a different discipline in the last few years. You know, historically we, we all came from the central data center environment where all big data was stored in, in, in uh, facilities. Uh, but in more recent times, uh, the, the criticality of power protection has disseminated into the edge, into uh, the office, all sorts of other locations really. And I think that perhaps today the most critical aspect of it is to do with the uh, protection of the communications time or the communications equipment because really real-time transfer of data is possible now across continents, certainly across um, groups of servers positioned in different locations. So uh, we found ourselves now really providing power protection in, in many more critical nodes, uh, not just the central data center, which is historically where I came from, of course. I think the uh, main challenges for the data, data center industry from the perspective of power and connectivity uh, really, really looks around um, how the company would be focused on uh, the products that they have. So one of the advantages that we have at Triplight is that we, we're not from just from the breaker to the load, we're not just above the data center floor, we've actually taken a, a broader look at that product range. So uh, we have equal numbers of the power protection, which is where the company historically came from, but also we have equal numbers of products that are around the AV and the fringes even of the data center market, the, the cabling, the copper, the fiber network. Uh, we have an equal number of, of solutions to, to both applications. I think one of the key questions that uh, operators should ask the companies before they consider the purchasing elements would be longevity in the industry, uh, sensitivity towards the latest trends, are you using the latest technology? Uh, I think one of the things that Triplight offers is being a private company, we're not perhaps as limited by um, some of the aspects of the more public companies wishing to make an immediate return on their investments. So the way we can look at it is, uh, sometimes taking a, a more of a risk or a gamble on uh, trends that potentially have a, a payout in the future but that we can produce custom or semi-custom products for now. So it's not unheard of for us to work very closely with a, with a customer with an idea uh, but without necessarily any immediate benefit to that. So I think that's one of the advantages for us and I think that's certainly one thing that a, an operator would look to as a company that's equally as in, innovative as they are looking for their return on investment immediately. I think the most important uh, strategic goals for Triplight 2020 and looking out for the next five years, uh, we are currently undergoing perhaps one of the uh, few people to buck the trends in the industry, but we're actually undergoing a pretty major expansion. Uh, again, going back to my statement that the company is private, allows us to take a, a different view. Uh, we've got one set of customers in reality and that's the, the, uh, the end users. We, we have that ability to really focus on just the end users and, and our customer base and I think that allows us to to really expand where other people are probably cutting back or, or maybe just maintaining the flow at the moment. So geographical expansion, um, we're expanding our sales team by close to 20% in the next two years and that will continue through. So I think that's just a commitment to how the company sees the opportunity in the industry right now. Look forward to in the next 10 years as regards to the trends in the industry and certainly from a power perspective is greater densification uh, you know, historically where I came from, uh, it started off at maybe less than a kilowatt of power required in a rack, whereas today it's quite typical to see 20 kilowatts of densification in a rack, uh, meaning that we've got to adapt and, and cope with that. Smaller UPSs, 
uh, lithium ion technologies in the backup power as opposed to lead. That's, that's obviously a feature that's coming through strong and fast. Uh, criticality of protecting the switching nodes as well as just the, uh, the central data, the servers. Yes, of course, we still have to protect those, but it's a lot more about the communications protection these days because of the uh, criticality of switching data from one section to another. So I think over the next 10 years, it's still going to continue on that same trend. It's going to get greater density. I think there are other, um, if you want to get into you know, some of the other, uh, the other trends that are out there, potentially uh, trading power. So uh, in that sense where um, data centers are becoming uh, storage elements in themselves uh, with blockchain out there and the ability to potentially sell back power. So if a data center felt confident enough that it was maybe had an hour of battery backup available and it wanted to sell back 30 minutes of that for peak shaving or peak demand applications, I think if we get into that, that technology is really out there now and trading data or trading um, energy in the same way that data is trended is going to become a, a thing that's going to become there in the next five to 10 years.